you know, as plant people, we like plants. We like growing plants, so we should naturally like where plants come from, which is outdoors in the environment. Bang, bang, grow. YouTube show. So last week we talked about on the video how to live a more low waste lifestyle and help the environment. Outdoors, nature, the environment, that's where we're taking these plants that we're cultivating indoors. It's so natural that plant parents should feel excited and motivated to be more sustainable, lead sustainable lives, incorporate low waste practices into their lifestyle. But I know that low waste, zero waste, sustainability, all of these words can be so intense intimidating. I know because they're intimidating to me too sometimes and I feel like you can you can feel like you're never ever going to be able to do enough and that is why I've had this really epic podcast interview with Nick from Farmer Nick NYC um, all about sustainability in life and sustainability as a plant parent and so today we're talking about plant parent sustainability. And along those lines, I have to share one of my other thrifted outfits. I showed you one in last week's video, a completely thrifted outfit, because thrifting is a great way to lead a more sustainable life. Guys, this is the plantiest onesie ever, and it's thrifted, and it's so cute, and I wear it everywhere. I wear it to like every plant event. I'm so obsessed with it. It was $15 at a thrift store in Philadelphia. So. I feel like thrift, I love, I love thrifting and if you guys love thrifting, please let me know in the comments if you've ever found some, you can find really good planty thrift finds, plant like clothing and stuff, but let me know what you like to thrift in the comments below. That could be a fun idea for a video, like planty thrift haul, huh? Let me know if that's interesting to you as well. Anyway, the video that I'm about to play for you is a conversation between Nick, me and Nick where Nick shares his tips for how to lead a more sustainable lifestyle when it comes to plant parenthood. So what the heck do we do with our plastic pots? What do we need to know about our soil and, and how sustainability factors into that? And like, what are some cool sustainable brands that we could be supporting in the plant space? It's real interesting. Before we dive into that conversation, I would love it if you could be a plant friend to me and like this video, subscribe, and like I said, leave me a comment. And after you're done watching this video, go and listen to the full podcast episode because there's a lot that didn't make it into this cut or last week's cut, and the podcast conversation itself is just amazing. Okay, Plant Parenthood and Sustainability, let go. Zero Waste and Plant Parenthood, I think there's lots of opportunity here. Oh, yes. um, and I think you're so uniquely suited to help our community do that since you have feet in both, both sides. So where, so first comes first, like everybody who I asked, you know, I told people we were talking and everyone who, who wrote in wants to know, what do we do about plastic nursery pots? Mm. I know everyone who's listening to this has a stack of them. Yeah. Away somewhere, right? A hundred percent. Under their deck, wherever it is, you've got them. And I think there are so many unique opportunities to kind of uh, address that and, and find mm -hmm. new ways to bring life to these things that otherwise would just be garbage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they're very unavoidable. So a couple different things here. Number one is if you don't want to reuse them yourself, go to a nursery and say, hey, uh, I bought some plants from you before. Do you want these back? And mm -hmm. a lot of them will say yes because it, it saves them money and some have programs where even if you're going to a local plant shop, they will take them back for you, which is mm -hmm. great. That's low hanging fruit, number one. Uh, number two is cache. And cacheing your, your, your plants uh, is a method where you're gonna take a plant that's in a pot and put it inside a larger pot. Usually that larger pot does not have a drainage hole, but we all know that drainage is still very, very important. Probably the most important thing um, in our watering schedules. Um, but doing so and having some pots on hand that if you do need to repot into a nursery pot and then cache into something else is another really easy thing to do. Um, um, is it, it pronounced cache? Because I've been calling it cache for like two years. I have no idea. It, <laughs> I just think Oh my cache. God. We I'm embarrassed. A, we need a pronunciation check. We need a pronunciation check. We got check. it. <laughs> well, you know what? None of us are pronouncing pronouncing uh, pronouncing plant Latin correctly either. So, one of us is right. I'm happy to be wrong, but I, I've definitely been calling it cash po, a cash po, cash pot. I heard someone call it cash po. I was like, oh, I guess that's a fancy name for it. I'll be fancy. That's that sounds way cooler. Like, oh man, yeah. I, I cash that plant. But cachet sounds really fancy too. 
I mean, what can I say? I'm a fancy yeah. guy. You're very fancy. Uh, <laughs> well, that's my, fa- that's my favorite recycling is I believe no pot should have a no drainage yes. hole. So I think that's a great, great one. Well, I'll, I'll challenge you on that a little bit, but that's a mm-hmm. different conversation maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, okay. So, so we cash, cache, wherever we want with those nursery pots. Getting into more of the, the advanced things that you can do. Um, one of my tricks, especially for those that uh, like to garden, Um, outside as well. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that you think about when you're gardening outside is, oh, I don't need to worry about a drainage tray. It can just filter out. It's on my deck, whatever it is. It's totally fine. But what happens is, is sometimes there's soil that when you're eventually watering and watering and watering, that soil is eventually going to leak out of that drainage hole as well. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll, a great example is when you pick up a pot that you had in the same spot outside for a long time. And all of a sudden you look and there's this just gross, disgusting stain. And oftentimes yeah. it's very hard to remove. Um, and the easy solution to this is buying the, the plastic tarp, right? That goes in the bottom of, of raised beds and planters and that prevents the soil from coming out. But we don't want to buy new plastic, especially plastic that is very much single use um, and can't be recycled at all. So. Um, one of my favorite tricks, which I just posted about um, last week, is taking the smaller little uh, nursery pots and putting them like a little tent over the drainage. Oh yeah, tray. you made an Instagram reel about this. Yes, and it yeah. was it was I got so so much feedback on it because people saying, "Oh my God, that's such a great way to use it," and it's going to function the same as you would if you put that plastic black mat down there. Mm-hmm. And I put it down there. I always put um, some, some LECA or hydration stones down there, regardless of whether or not it has a drainage hole, just for increased drainage. And that kind of keeps it in place. And then mm-hmm. I add my soil and then I plant my plant. So it's a, it's a really good method to preventing that soil from leaking out. You can also do it with your indoor plants as well. I love that. Yeah. You make like a little, um, a little house, a little extra little house within the, within you. These are for like larger, uh, big containers that you're, you know, putting larger plants in. Right. I mean, it doesn't even have to be the larger ones, right. You know, mm-hmm. if you go out and you buy, um, some small succulents in like the two inch planter. Right. And then you, you have you the little can guys. Those, no problem. And especially for the smaller nursery pots that I get, which brings me to my next, uh, tip is that, I'm constantly propagating plants and also germinating seeds. Mm -hmm. So if you have a space where you can kind of, you know, whether it maybe it's a humidity dome or a germination station, whatever it might be, always think about growing something new. And, you know, you could literally have an edible garden of greens in with the nursery pots that you use for your house plants. How kind of closed loop is that? Right. It's it's so fun to think about. Um, so that's always, always a good way to, to reuse them. And then there's a couple interesting companies that have popped up, um, recently about how you can reuse plastic in different ways and mold it into different, you know, functional items or even artwork. Um, one of the, in, in particular, which I have not used yet, uh, cause of the pandemic, but it's called precious plastic and you can bring them plastic that you are worried it won't get recycled or, Maybe it's not possible to recycle that plastic. And there's these machines that will break it down and melt it down and be molded into something new. So how cool would it be is to take your 20 plastic nursery pots, go to precious plastic, melt it down and turn it into a planter or a turn it plant. into a coaster or this or that, right? Um, so it's all about giving new life and being really creative in that process. That's awesome. Um, I definitely want to hit you up for a list of companies like that, that we can put in the show notes for people to check out. Cause that's so cool. And I know a lot of people in our community are stressed about their plastic pot usage. Um, Mm. I also feel like I'm seeing companies, I'm seeing some companies that are trying to come up with more biodegradable nursery pots. I, I definitely think in the next like 10 years, if not, hopefully less than that, like five, like I've already seen a few companies that are starting to like ship their house plants or ship, ship plants in more biodegradable options. I've seen that a couple of times. Who? Coconut husks. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. And exactly. Yeah. Like Quar. And you had kind of mentioned this before, 
but propagating plants is a beautiful opportunity to upcycle stuff because you could propagate something in anything. I mean, I've seen people propagating plants in old mason jars and old, you know, salsa jar, jars, like you say, but like truly anything you have lying around that holds water, um, you know, you can stick a plant and, and make some new plants for new friends. Um, and a lot of us who are sending plants to friends and sending friends gifts and doing these swaps that I see so many people doing, it makes me so happy to see p- people connecting that way during the pandemic, but trying to reuse your shipping materials. Yeah, Folia Collective uses those um, dissolvable packing peanuts. And the first time I, I used them, like you, they ship with the dissolvable packing peanuts and then you're supposed to put them in water and they like turn into soap. Oh, how cool so is that? Cool. I gotta cool. go visit them. They're in LA, I think. They're in LA, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're the I, best. Danae is the best. I can't wait to go visit. That's gonna be so fun. Yeah, shout out. Okay, so those were your zero waste steps. Any other zero waste steps for for plant parenthood? So, so here's here's a big one. Um, okay. And th- this one is more so environmental, but choosing the sustainable soil options. I cannot. I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh Anyone who's going out there and wants to take care of the environment should not be buying from a company like miracle Grow um, Mm -hmm. that uses synthetic fertilizers, is owned by Monsanto, a company that's doing not so great things for our farmers and our land, um, especially uh, in the the Midwestern and Southern states where we might not be seeing a lot of that farming and a lot of those processes going on, but really buy from a quality soil provider I know you and I both love Espoma, uh, Mm -hmm. and when it comes to a company that is doing things the right way, both from an environmental standpoint and a low waste standpoint, because some of their soil bags are also recyclable. Which oh yeah, their bags are their bags are recyclable, and their plant is um, like all their plant is all solar. They they have like amazing commitments to the environment. Their their company is awesome. Yeah. So if anyone is looking for soil, Espoma would be the way to go, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Although I'm sure there's others that are doing um, some, some positive things, but soil is really important to me. Um, and then the, the last thing here, which I think is, is going to be tough for some people to, to hear, but know your plant number. And what I mm-hmm. mean by that is, if you, let's say you have 100 plants and you're taking care of those 100 plants, they're all thriving. If you add plant 101 and then the quality of, of the care suffers for another plant and you start losing plants in your collection, that's not sustainable. And yeah. I, I think that being honest with yourself about, do I have the space? Do I have the time? Do I have the right environment for this? Mm-hmm. That is a lesson in sustainability because it's a lesson in restraint. And it's a lesson in you know, taking a step back and saying, I don't need another Mm-hmm. My number is a hundred and your number might be 200, but you know, Sam's number might be six and that's yep. fine. So we can't just think about it in terms of what we're buying or what we're doing. Also what we're not doing. Um, and sometimes practicing that restraint and knowing your plant number and being really honest about it is the best way to limit waste and also take care of your plants the best way you can. Oh my God, that's music to my ears. I mean, we just had a whole hour and a half conversation about this on an episode I recently did called How to Manage a Large Plant Collection because mm. this concept of plant numbers and like your threshold for what, whatever number that is, and it truly is different for every person. I know people in my community that have three plants that, and three is their limit, and they're so happy with three, and they're getting everything they need out of their plant collection from that three. And then I also know people that are so happy with like 240 plants. And also, like if we're collecting plants in a healthy way, you know, if you're getting packages of plants like every day. So Maria, you're you're gonna laugh. Um, I've I've never ordered a plant by mail. Have you really? Good never. for you. <laughs> uh, for, for some of those reasons, right? Um, you know, if I can find a local provider that has it Mm -hmm. great. Um, But, you know, there's a lot of packaging that goes into it. And there's also, um, you know, if you're getting some of these rare plants from across the world, right, that's a plane ride. That's (laughs) a plane ride. You know, I've had some people say, oh, but, you know, the plane's taking off anyway. I'm like, it's, if so many, if everyone had that attitude, 
then mm. we wouldn't get anything done um, from an environmental perspective. So I've never bought a plant that, that wasn't in person. Um, and I hope to, to keep it that way. Well, that's a great tip. I mean, as the world starts opening up again, that's a small step someone could take is just trying to buy plants from their local nurseries instead of ordering. You know, the next time you want to go order something specific, maybe call your local nurseries and see if they have it first and have them put it aside for you and and try and do that. And then also like you get to know your local nurseries and you get Supporting to support small local business. businesses. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you will be shocked at some of the variety that these businesses have. I mean, I was yeah. at a plant shop, a random plant shop, or it's actually more of a more a garden nursery in Atlanta. Uh -huh. And I'm walking through their greenhouses, most of which were edible, and there's a variegated monstera just hanging out. Wow. Uh, Did you get it? No one around. It, it, oh, it's been there for weeks. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of uh, hidden gems out there when it comes totally. to the local nurseries and gardens. So cannot stress it enough, like really, really do your best to support those small businesses. I loved this conversation with Nick. It really got me thinking about, I got a lot of room for growth when it comes to this area. Um, I order everything online and I know that I can't stop ordering everything online right now, especially because of where we're moving, which I'll tell you soon <laughs> where we're moving. But anyway, um, I'm really excited in our new home to get to know the local nurseries better. I think that that's been an area of my life that I, I, you know, I've, it's just so easy, especially with the pandemic to order things online. And I'm really excited now that hopefully the world will start to open up again in 2021 to see how I can reevaluate actually supporting local nurseries. Um, you know, and if I have to order online, even ordering from, from those local nurseries or choosing, you know, nurseries who ship sustainably. And um, yeah, there's a lot of room for improve, improvement. And I really loved that shop locally tip that he gave. And I'm excited to kind of dive in and see how I can level up my game where my Plant Parenthood game. Please let me know what tips of these have inspired you in the comments below and what action you're gonna be taking, whether it's this video or last video. I wanna know, I want this community to, to start talking about this, this uh, topic because it's important, uh, obviously, and it should be extra important to us plant people because we like plants, we like Mother Earth, like let's, let's, keep, her, let's keep her healthy and safe and do what we can. All right, plant friends, until next time, do, keep do, blooming do, and keep growing. Do, 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 do. Doom 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 doom